What's happening guys? Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick and on this channel I talk about cryptocurrency, decentralized finance, and economics. Today's video I'm looking at Avalanche again doing some updates on AVAX, ecosystem strength, as well as a few plays that we've been following on this channel, Wonderland and Trader Joe. I'm also going to talk about some strategies for taking profits or reinvesting profits if you did take some during this run up the past few days. And then finally, I'm going to be looking at some other ecosystems that I'm looking at rotating to. I'm still keeping a substantial position in AVEX, still one of my favorite projects, but there are some smaller projects, say closer to rank 80 to 120 on coin market cap that I'm that I'm looking at and I'll be covering those today as well. All right, so with that, let's get into it. So I think my last video on AVEX was before the weekend. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make one the past couple of days. But uh, yeah, you can see that AVEX just had this tremendous, tremendous strength, even when Bitcoin was dipping here and ran up almost to 150. And then it's now finally, finally retracing now. And so the first thing I'll say is that, you know, hopefully some of you guys uh, banked some profits. If you bought at $60 or even lower, uh, you could still bank profits now. I mean, if you skipped it on the way up, you could still take some on the way down. Uh, that's that's not what I'm doing, but you know, 2x is still still very nice, very nice return. And and by the way, there are traders who do that as a strategy. I'm not a technical analyst, but there are traders who wait for the first major retrace before they take profits, and then and then they figure they're not buying at the top, but or they're not selling at the top, but but they're still. Uh, banking some nice gains, uh, but as as far as strategy here, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump over to the sort of profit taking profit taking matrix that I looked at in the past on this channel, and you know the way that I like to do things is when the market's cool, you want to go into riskier investments. When the market's hot, you want to move to less risky investments. So if we take that with AVEX here, then Looking over here, when AVAX was hot here, this is when you'd want to be moving to less risky investments. And then here, as it's retracing, if you move to less risky investments, you might be moving back to riskier investments. Now let's go back to the matrix. And so what does that mean in the context of AVAX? If you were holding ecosystem plays like Joe or CRA, CRA being Krabata, then as everything got hotter, CRA, for example, gained tremendously on AVAX, then you might convert some of that to AVEX. And then when everything retraces, these would retrace harder, you might convert back. Uh, that, that's a lot of work. Some some of you might prefer to just hold it hold it through, but but this is a way that you can sort of increase your stack, increase your stack. Uh, the other thing you might do is you might take AVEX, convert half of it to USDC, and then put it into the AVEX USDC liquidity pool on Trader Joe. This is going to earn you substantial rewards on your crypto, but because AVAX is paired with USDC and because you con converted half of it to USDC, your volatility is going to be much lower than it would be if you were holding AVAX alone. And the other thing you can do is you can rotate, right? So we could say, well, AVAX has come up a lot, right? Many of us on this channel were looking at AVAX over the summer. We've done tremendous multiples, 3, 4x even, even 2x or 50% is very nice. But there's other ecosystems that haven't had the same run-up yet, and uh, like I said, I'll mention a few of those today that that I'm considering moving my profits into. Uh, all of this, though, you do have to make your own decisions and decide what's right for you and your financial situation. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just giving you the tools to make decisions on your own. All right, so with that, let's look at some of the fundamentals of AVEX because price is noise, but fundamentals are what we care about. So the first thing is transactions per second have continued to go parabolic. That means more and more people are are doing transactions. And look at this cumulative TX count. I mean, this is just a textbook, textbook parabola. And you can see that it's hit an all-time high. Unfortunately, I don't think you can zoom in on this graph. But it hit an all-time high within the past week, looking at six or 700,000 per day. If we look at daily active addresses, same thing. It hit an all-time high either yesterday, the 23rd, 
yeah, so it hit an all-time high on the 22nd and then was nearly as high on the 23rd. And when we last covered uh, this chart, monthly active addresses, it wasn't quite to, November wasn't quite to where October was yet, but now it's far surpassed it and we still have a week left. So, so this parabolic uptrend is continuing. And if you look at C-Chain cumul cumulative contracts deployed, that's increasing as well, meaning that developers are deploying new contracts and new dApps on AVEX. So with all of that being said, I mean, the, the fundamentals are still there. I'm still bullish on AVEX. I don't see, see any reason why, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't see, I don't see any reason why, you know, things have changed. I, I think it just got overheated, personally. Uh, I will say that there was an issue with gas. So this is uh, not FUD, but uh, there was an issue with gas the past few days where, let's see if we can find the average gas. Yeah, so here you go. You can see this is by the hour. There were a few hours where gas spiked substantially because of high network activity, and sometimes it was costing as much as $10 for a transaction. So, I mean, still way lower than Ethereum. I tried to do a swap on Ethereum yesterday, and it was... Two to three hundred dollars every time I tried it, which is just absurd, and is going to price out ninety to ninety-nine percent of people. So AVEX is still much better than that, but this this did concern me. However, the AVEX team has a plan to reduce this, and you can see it was it was just for one hour, right? And then it dropped, and then there was another bump here, not quite as high, and then it dropped again. And the reason that it went so high is there was this project called Hatter Finance that launched, and Hatter Finance is a reflective meme token. So that's a meme token where when you buy or sell it, you pay a 10% tax. And then in this case, the tax is used to purchase time from the Wonderland project and then distribute that time to all the other holders of Hatter. And you can think about how that's a fairly complicated transaction. It's three, four different things happening every single time you buy or sell this. And so with a lot of people trying to do this at once and then all of these transactions going on, uh, that just clogged up the network. And uh, I'm not necessarily, by the way, covering this, I'm not saying that you should invest in it. Uh, do your own research if you want to. It, it's dumped substantially already. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see what happens, but you, you can check out the team's website here, hatter.finance, check out their Telegram and social media to, to decide for yourself whether it's something that you, you think will have another, another uh, round of hype. So with that being said, let's cover a few of these projects we've been talking about. First up is Wonderland. We love Wonderland on this channel. And uh, so the thing with here is the thing here is the price is bounced up and down, but you want to pay attention to two things: the market cap, because remember the supply of time is constantly increasing at about one and a half percent per day. And two, uh, you want to pay attention to the treasury because the Treasury is what's backing time, and the Wonderland team is not just holding the Treasury right now, they're using it to earn yields, and they have some plans to actually use it to purchase and build businesses, which will have money that will accrue back to time holders. And keep in mind, this Treasury, in terms of liquid assets, MIM and AVAX, is enormous. I mean, even major companies don't usually have hundreds of millions of dollars of liquid assets that they can deploy on things. Uh, that, that is just really, really substantial. And I think they're going to do some cool things with it. So the founder gave us some hints recently. First, he said yesterday, this is why time is focused on investing into gaming, blockchain, and NFTs. We know they're invested into blockchain, but it's interesting that they're focusing on gaming and NFTs as well. And he posted a little chart here where he showed that the total market for games is $175 billion dollars which is apparently substantially larger than the market for film, music, or even major sports franchises. I didn't know that. The other thing that he said is, for the 80s and early 90s kids, skateboarding was the hype. Supreme was born there, underground. For the new Gen Z, esports are the new skateboard, and Wonderland is born. Time to change. So he's planning on Wonderland being a Supreme-like brand for esports. And someone asked him, where do you see time a year from now? To which he responded, major esports tournaments creator, pop-up stores in the major cities selling fashion collabs with NFT drops, 
investing in blockchain gaming and creating our own games, 10 million plus followers. So that is the vision. Wonderland will not just be an own fork. It won't just be this DeFi project where you can earn 83,000% APY. The plan is for it to actually be a major player in the space of NFTs and gaming. And I think this metaverse is one of the biggest opportunities in crypto. And if Wonderland could become sort of the major brand or a major brand in in this market, then sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. And again, they have huge, huge war chests, $700 million to deploy for this purpose, not to mention some of the best, some of the best solidity developers in the business. Next up, Trader Joe. Trader Joe, some people have been disappointed with the price, but keep in mind it has pretty much doubled in the past two weeks. So uh, it's tough for me to be disappointed with that. And, and even better, the fundamentals are increasing. It's now doing about $2 million in revenue per day, which would put it on par with major DeFi projects, even those that are in the top 100 on coin rankings and on Ethereum. In terms of volume, Trader Joe has now flipped Uniswap V2, doing $700 million of volume in the past 24 hours, and is close to sushi, sushi swap. I think two days ago, it may have actually been higher than sushi swap for a day. So again, fundamentals are there. Still a project that I have a lot of faith in, and I believe they're launching leverage yield farming at some point in the next few months. So they have some, some exciting features coming. All right, so now let's talk about a few places that I am looking at to rotate to. So the thing to keep in mind with these rotations is the best time to be farming a network is when it's not being hyped. Might seem counterintuitive, but consider that people who were farming Phantom or Avalanche over the summer earn tremendous rewards because because you don't have as many people in the ecosystem, which means that your APRs are higher, and you can purchase some of these ecosystem tokens at dirt cheap prices, and then and then when the ecosystem runs, a lot of the tokens on AVAX and Phantom did 10, 15x, or even more. And I'm not saying that these projects we'll talk about will necessarily do that. Uh, but but I want people to understand that that's why I'm looking at projects that are are not yet having having their full hype cycle. They're not the ones that everyone's talking about. So the three that I'm looking at are Moon River, Oasis, and Harmony. Harmony being the largest and probably the one that's gotten the most attention so far. Moon River is, as some of you may know, an EVM compatible parachain built on the Kusama network. We've been talking about this for a while. Started farming it last month maybe even September, actually. Uh, but you can see the price has just bounced around for the past few months. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that because I'm farming, I'm earning my earning my rewards, and uh, and yeah, it's just bouncing around three to 400 mostly. It bounced briefly up to 500 after it was listed on Binance. Uh, some people managed to get in around 300 a few days ago. If you didn't, because of the whole market, we're doing a nice dip now, and I'm definitely... Definitely adding some more mover to my portfolio. I, th I think that this one, its, it's market cap is currently under a billion dollars uh, before dilution. I think this one, I see no reason why it couldn't be a major player uh, in in the layer one space. I'm not saying it necessarily will, but it's this is the bridge between the Kusama and Polkadot ecosystems and with the Ethereum ecosystem. So I, I don't see any reason why this couldn't be a major player, and, and there are already a lot of projects built on there. It's probably the most developed ecosystem outside of the top 100. Next, I'm looking at Oasis. So this project has just been on a bit of a run the past few days. I first covered it on my Friday video, uh, I think over here on the 18th, 18th or 19th. Uh, and since then, it's had a uh, big bump. But the thing to remember is that this is because there was news for Oasis. So they announced a partnership with Meta, formerly known as Facebook. And they also announced a partnership with Google Cloud. So they are actually working with two of the largest tech companies. And they're also working with BMW, by the way. So they're working with companies that most crypto projects could only dream of. And despite this, they are still at rank 86. Rank 86, market cap of $1.5 billion. So not a micro cap, but also not quite into the role of major yet. And I think not many people have heard of Oasis or their Rose token. So this is definitely one that I'm looking to rotate into. They don't 
have many DeFi projects yet, but they do have one called YuzuSwap. YuzuSwap is launching any day now. Uh, you can take a look at their Twitter, Yuzu underscore swap, and they have some tasks that you can complete to get into their launch. I think they require you to, to tag people on Twitter, so I'm probably not going to do that, but if any of you are interested in this, feel free to tag me. You can see my Twitter handle over here, dynamo underscore Patrick. If you need a friend to tag, feel free feel free to tag me. My notifications are probably going to blow up now. Uh, but definitely do that. And, and, and I'll be covering Oasis more substantially in a full video, but the thing that's neat about this is that they allow you to actually tokenize and earn money off of your data. And they also allow for private smart contracts. So you can imagine that there's a lot of contracts, like maybe even a personal loan or or various things like that, that you wouldn't want to be on a public blockchain. So they allow you to have the option to make those things private, which I think will be pretty big. Finally, we have Harmony One. I've covered this before, but I am looking at DeFi Kingdoms again. Uh, I've been farming this since I first covered it last month or the month before. Uh, and DeFi Kingdoms Jewel Token has been extremely strong. Uh, but I haven't seen one Harmony token. It hasn't fully followed yet. So I'm looking to add some some one to my portfolio, some more one at least, and then to farm it on DeFi Kingdoms, which currently has APRs around 800%. Uh, I will say that uh, that this is both a DEX and a game. The game is not fully launched yet. They're adding new features. They have, have NFTs now. You can purchase heroes. I'm not actually participating in all that, although maybe I will at some point. Right now, I'm just using it as as a standard farming DEX. It's the largest DEX on Harmony. So that's what I'm looking at. Moon River Oasis and Harmony 1, but still keeping a substantial position in AVAX. Let me know what you guys think about these projects. Let me know what you think about these gas issues that AVAX is having. Do you think that they'll be able to resolve it? And until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.